hello central, give me mother nature. Mother nature, what's up with this 95 degrees on Wednesday? Didn't you get the memo? It's September! I know, I know, it's terrible, terrible, just terrible. 95 degrees on Wednesday? <sighs> if it looks like I'm dressed for the Jersey Shore, you got that right. My bags is packed. And as soon as this live sale is over tonight, I'm hitting it. Well, we'll probably wait and hit the pike tomorrow morning. I have a really good friend, an old friend who lives in Asbury Park, New Jersey. And uh, I'm actually going to be using the downstairs part of his uh, two flat old house, which um, he rents out and ain't nobody in it this week. Guess who's going to be in it this week? All right. So no, not on vacation, but I will for these three or four 95 degree days. Gonna head for the shore. It's only an hour away and it's always a good 10, 15 degrees cooler there. And I can take my laptop and work. Maybe do some thrifting in the Asbury Park area. And we've gotta go back because I promised we would visit the site of the Morrow Castle disaster. Let's do it. But right now, I got a thrift haul for you. Not selling anything. Now, it's a thrift haul, and let's do it. Uh, most of it is Art Deco, and most of it I just bought in the last couple of days. Unbelievable. Now, before we begin, today's cup of coffee is brought to you by... A cup of coffee, a sandwich, and you, a cozy corner, a table for two. Ooh, look at that. Now, I'm not telling you the name of the pattern. I'll tell you who made it. It was the Heisey Glass Company. And that's a piece of black, not Bakelite, but it's an early type of a plastic that's right there in the little handle. Do you know the name of the pattern? I want to thank Rob and Cheryl who gifted this to me when they, uh, when I saw them and Vintage Vinny several weeks ago. In fact, it's been probably a month ago now, maybe a little bit more. Really excited to have this. It's a cup and saucer that um, I didn't have until now. So let's take a sip. What's the name of the pattern? Oh, that's good. Put it in the description box below. Uh, I'm going to show you what that looks like, <clears throat> excuse me, on a tray. And we're going to do that in just a minute. Now, in case you don't know, if you're relatively new to the old curiosity shop, I have always been drawn towards the design era of what I call between the wars. So roughly 1920 to 1940. And these items that were made, everything you're going to see now, I believe was made within those two decades. Everything came from thrift shops in the Philadelphia, South Jersey, Delaware Valley area. And I bought everything. <laughs> In the last couple of days. This I have seen reproduced but I think and I'm almost certain that this is an old one. Look at this hanging Art Deco glass ceiling shade and the way they used to do it would be with these chains. You know this. You might have been in a house that had these. It's hard for you. <clears throat> I'll turn it upside down. We still have the three chains that would attach to the ceiling fixture and no damage on this at all. Look at that. So I do believe this to be an original uh, ceiling shade fixture from the Art Deco era and I just love it. I found two tiny little pink cordials etched, see? 
and they came from some little thrift shop. They're from the 30s with a paneled optic look. I bought another um, sort of a block optic looking uh, glass ice bucket. It's great to have the metal handle, which is completely rusted. I'll clean it, just haven't done so yet. This is unmarked, but when we see this kind of glass, we can say Hawking, Federal, Hazel Atlas, you know, that kind of thing. There was a pattern called Block Optic. <clears throat> and that may be what this is. I didn't look, look anything up. So it's green. Of course, it has uranium in it and it will glow under a black light. And you go ahead and put your ice in there. You'll be perfectly fine. Remember, there's more uranium. Well, we won't go through that again. It's safe to use. Look at this milk bottle. Now it's a little cloudy and I should stick white paper in it so you can see it. Um, I had to get it anyway. It's called Dietrich's Cream Milk and Butter. All right, see there, that's okay. But look at the back side, it says before retiring. And we have a very suave, uh, either a David Niven looking character or um, who was the dude in, um, oh fudge, you know, with Asta and Myrna Loy, William Powell. A very William Powell looking man there in his uh, smoking jacket or his robe. And he's in the ice box pouring himself a glass of milk. Very 1930s. You see that? So I'm going to try to clean the bottle and maybe bring this cup paint up just a little bit. I think it'll, if I poured milk in it, you'd really get to see it. So I love that little 1930s era piece. Uh, you might look at this instantly and say, well, that doesn't look very old. It actually does go back to the 1930s, and this is a pressed wood type of material, like a wood pulp. I believe it's mostly, you know, glue and sawdust. Now that, what was it, Sirocco Company did a lot of wall art in the 60s and 70s. But this type of pressed wood pulp material goes way back to the 20s. And gift items were made, picture frames were made, uh, even loudspeakers for old radios were sometimes made out of this pressed wood. And I'll pull in and let you see. It's all the original paint and it's a beautiful sort of English cottage, I suppose. Look at the old clock in there and it works still ticks and it says the homestead and then the clock is made by the Lux clock company of Waterbury Connecticut let's see if we can get you to let's turn it and see now watch today it won't it won't tick wait a minute let's hold on now well for pity's sake see it doesn't want to well it was working the other day I guess I got to clean my clock. Oh, well, let's see if we can get it working again. This is made by the Deluxe Clock and Manufacturing Company of New York. It's called the Homestead Clock, and we can see it pressed into the wood. You can really see on the back. It's great to have the original clock in it. And just a novelty clock from the 30s but I love that and I will operate it was ticking I imagine it's just glooped up with some old dirt and dust uh, this probably shouldn't be in here but I just thrifted it I gotta go and find out some well I guess I should show it to you it's pretty I, and sometimes it's difficult to tell if it's from the 60s or if it's earlier than that, that would be pretty with a little votive candle down in there.
And then, well, here's another little chrome. Is this one marked? No. But for serving nuts while you're playing cards, or after dinner mints, that's very Art Deco in style. And then for my own collection, I have, and I have to film it one of these days, I've got a very nice growing collection of candy jars, which sort of look like mini apothecary jars. And you know how many times we've talked about these. So once again, I will repeat myself every glass company in America who was making glass in the 1920s and early 30s made these because they were a very popular gift item and there was money to be made. Who doesn't like a candy dish? Now I don't have one in solid pink but I do now and it is wonderful. It's, um, it's got the typical little etched flower on there and uh, this will join my growing collection of 19 mid 20s to mid 30s era candy jars which i just love to collect they're out there um a light green mixing bowl yes uranium yes glows and i loved how when this was being made it got whacked against something right there and, and, and the rolled edge kind of got bent up a little bit. See that as it was drying? I mean, as it was cooling in the factory, it just bumped into something on the Lear maybe or, and so, uh, you know, not much quality control then, but it's just a depression era green mixing bowl. Also from that era, now this is the biggest one I've had. You recognize these from the sellers cabinets generically speaking Hoosier cabinet and there's a spot for your own label I keep finding these but this is the I usually find the little ones and unmarked on the bottom uh, Hazel Atlas made some of these who um, uh, Owens Illinois made some some of them are actually marked sellers on the bottom for the company that made cabinets, Hoosier and Keystone. And so that's great, probably for coffee, sugar, flour, something like that. I found two of these stems, just two. Oh, I wish there were more. Look at that with the platinum bands. Man, I wish there were more, but We'll put these on the shelf, and one of these days, two more will pop up somewhere, and we'll have a set of four. Now this little set of tumblers is something that was popular to do in the 20s and 30s. There would be a decanter or a pitcher that would go with it, and I've got six of these. I'm just holding up two of them, and it's a beautiful emerald green with a... Uh, platinum overlay and I didn't polish this platinum yet. You could. If you polished it, it would come up and be just about as shiny as that chrome. But I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to leave them like that. They're not little cordial size glasses. They're nice little almost like juice size tumblers, but typically these would be for some type of uh, uh, some type of a decanter would go with them. And I have six of them in absolutely excellent condition. You know, because they are this sort of darker green and not really a Christmassy green, these would look nice even with some of the amber items from the 30s, uh, from, you know, the amber and black glass. So we'll see. Now, some of this goes into my own collection. Some of it will wind up in live sales and in eBay. I'm giving you just a little break today from some of the autumn things. 
I also could not believe, and still can't believe, that I bought this from the Philly AIDS thrift store for $35. <laughs> and it's not a reproduction. It's a Western Electric, or wait, is it Northern Electric? It is Western Electric. It's the E1 hand set and the D1 base. Look at the condition on this. Um, you, I'm telling you what, that's the original paint on there as well, and the original felt on the bottom. Somebody was using it because they did go in and wire it for a telephone jack. Now, I don't have a landline here yet, but now that I've got this, we may have to get a landline. Hello, this is the old curiosity shop complaint department. May I help you? Um, phenomenal condition. 1930s uh, desk, and I know you want me to do this, but you and I are old enough no big thrill. I mean, I grew up doing this. On, we had a big old heavy black phone. Even when I was really little, it was it was in our downstairs. And I don't remember if we remember in those days you, the phone company leased the telephones to you early on. But anyway, I know you want me to do this. What amazing condition! $35. And it was marked 40. And the guy said, eh, 35. You know, I was friendly. He was friendly. You treat people in a friendly manner, be, manner behind the counter, and sometimes they give you a little discount. Look at this. Now hold on. All right. You're gonna flip. Miss Lemon, eat your heart out. I don't want to talk about it. Ooh! Woo, 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 woo. Okay. Oh my goodness. Now there's the high Z teacup that I was drinking out of at the beginning. Let's put this tray down. You already saw this English piece, which actually I got last week. So deco. Huh. Made in England. Look what else is made in England. And I got these at the Retrospect Thrift Shop on South Street in Philadelphia. And guess what? <clears throat> they were 50% off because they had been sitting in the store for more than a month. They were originally marked at $16 for the pair. And they sat for a month and nobody bought them. I got them for $8 for the pair. Yeah, made in England. Now, it is possible that that was an open sugar. It's also possible that it had a lid and you can't always tell I've had enough of these creams and sugars and I've seen enough original advertisements to know that you just sometimes don't know unless you see an advertisement whether there was a lid on it or not. This one may have had a lid, doesn't bother me at all that there isn't one there. White Bakelite, sort of plasticky Bakelite-y type handles with all these little feet and they are marked on the bottom, something, something made in England. So I'm pairing these with this. Wow. And then you've already seen the high Z teacup. Let's move it. Look at this, what would be called like a hostess tray. I'll try not to blind you, but it's got the Bakelite handles on it and it's got some etching on it as well. We'll put it all back together again and can you see this? You know you can see it. Something from Jeeves and Wooster. Is it Wooster or Brewster? Jeeves and Wooster? It's Wooster. 
Look at this. If you like the elegance of the 1930s, you have just had a fit. Am I selling it? Oh, I don't know. I'm not selling the cup and saucer because that goes into my cup and saucer collection. Ooh. The other pieces, I don't know. Let me play with them for a while and we'll see. Now, that's it for today's thrift haul. I'm releasing this so that you might see it on Labor Day. And if you're watching it on Labor Day, join me Monday night for the live sale, okay? And then in the next couple of days down the shore. Yeah, I think so. Why not? Well, what did you like? What was your favorite? Make sure you tell me in the description box below. And I am going to bid you farewell. Enjoy this heat wave. I guess we can enjoy it. We've got air conditioning, but check on the elderly and the pets and anyone who might not have air conditioning because it's hot and it's going to stay hot for about five or six days. Hot, hot, hot. Well, that's it. I'm Scott from the Old Curiosity Shop, as always, saying thank you so much for watching. Have a great day. See you tonight, Monday, 8 o'clock, live sale. And until then, wait for the cat. And so long for now. Now back to the complete department. What do you mean you didn't get your package yet? I mailed it two weeks ago. Huh?